Hi guys, it is the sixth build I am creating based on this one empty shell, so today I would like to bend the rules a little bit and try something different. In a shell challenge you are not allowed to change, add or delete any of the existing exterior walls. Anything else goes, but you can already see that I am building two-story house while my shell is one story tall. Basically I duplicated it and stuck two identical shells on top of each other, so depending on how you look at it you might think that I am cheating. But in my defense, I did not change any exterior walls, I just doubled them. I doubled the challenge. I would say that it is a stretch. Some shell challenge hosts allow that, some don't. So please let me know in the comments down below what you think. Did I cheat or just bend the rules to my advantage? I can revisit this build if I cheated, if needed. By the way, a reminder that I limit packs in my shell challenge. This time it is base game plus seasons expansion pack. And I limited my color scheme to peach, pink, purple, black and white and orangey toned wood. I will link here the video where I explain it in more detail in case you want to go back and watch that. This time I'm building in Willow Creek because unfortunately Seasons Pack doesn't have the world, it changes existing worlds adding weather. Mildly speaking, I'm not a fan of having it locked behind a paid DLC, but it is what it is in The Sims 4. Based on the furniture which came with Seasons Pack, I thought about creating big generational suburban home in Willow Creek, so this time I've chosen than a bigger lot, it is 40 by 30 lot across the street from the ghost house. And this house is a giant family home. A decent replacement of base game default house that I bulldozed. There are four bedrooms three bathrooms, storage room, music room, home gym, home office and almost every skill building item available in the game. It is the perfect house for gameplay. Because you can stay on this lot and don't ever leave to visit community lots. I hate loading screens so much that my sims almost never leave their homes. Storage, music, gym and office rooms can be turned into additional bedrooms, so you would have 8 bedrooms in total and there is a room to add additional bathrooms as well. I just thought that I would rather build a house house for 8 sims as it is a default maximum and the house still would not look ridiculous. Or if you play with mods you can easily house up to 16 sims here, I guess. My goal is to make my houses as accessible and versatile for you as I possibly can. On the outside I made huge wraparound porches on the front and at the back which go up to the house edge on both sides and I understand that the sides of the house look ugly and strange, I know. If it wasn't a shell challenge, I think I would shrink the second floor and make it twice smaller maybe, but it would be definitely cheating. So I did my best to create a nice suburban family home given my baseline. And I covered ugly sides with tall trees so you would not even notice a strange look in gameplay. That's a pro tip to make any house look nice, just cover it in trees. I'm pretty much happy how the roof line turned out. I added a chimney at the back of the house on the bump out where a game roof piece looked strange. I actually changed the third floor level of this house to the tall wall height in order to be able to fit a chimney using the tallest half wall. Half wall is a fair game. Just double checking that we are on the same page. It became a very wide chimney and unfortunately fireplace ended up in another spot in this house. That's not ideal but okay. I forgot that the season spec build set doors, columns, spandrel came in nice peachy wood color. I have never used it. And and I almost immediately realized why. Four of six windows in this pack do not have the same swatch. Why? It is a beautiful color in my opinion and it matched my color scheme perfectly, but I could not match all the windows. I tried to mix and match other light wood color or white windows, but it wasn't working unfortunately, so I gave up and changed the accent color to white. The house looks much better this way. Exterior color scheme turned out very cute. I used season stone on the first floor which matches columns, pink paneling on the second floor, white accents and grey roof. So adorable in my opinion. Grey color is a stretch to my challenge again, but you are the judge and the jury and I'm just trying to complete the challenge to the best of my ability. So please let me know in the comments if you think that it is cheating too. By the way, I will show you a tour of a finished house at the end of this video, but to keep the speed build short and interesting for you, I will skip some parts of it. For example, generic suburban landscaping. You've seen it a million times, right? Base game kitchens and bathrooms 
same out of the window. I made the floor plan very closed off because I thought this is an old classic house and it worked this way very well because I was able to squeeze more rooms but to keep them spacious at the same time. Plus I used arches instead of doors in main living areas to make it let's say partially open. All common areas are downstairs except for the home gym which is upstairs along with all the bedrooms. Additionally all areas flow into one another very realistically in my opinion. I will show you bear with me. So on the inside I start furnishing with the dining room, not with the kitchen as I always do. I thought that it was a fancy house back in the day and current owners keep it in good condition. So they have a lot of expensive classic furniture and decor. I carry the swipes throughout the house. I used a season set big dining table and chairs in this orange wood color with golden accents. To fill in the space there is fake custom cupboard which I made using tall version of kitchen cabinets and to the other side there is cluttered bookshelf. I think for the first time ever especially in the pink swatch I used this chicken statuette and put it on the table like a centerpiece and also added this I don't know what it's called green leaves with candles from seasons I hate most of the base game decor it is the ugly and textures look strange on most of the items seasons have a lot of seasonal decor for holidays which wasn't working for an average house but I will include it in bedrooms especially in the kids bedroom but I struggled a lot decorating this house it felt like I was building with just the base game and it keeps stressing me out. You can see I used this orange base game wood flooring in this house. Usually I hate this wood pattern because it looks like the oldest ugliest wood to me. <laughs> I know it's not supposed to but I had something similar in my childhood bedroom and I hated it so I don't like using it in my sims houses. But it works well for classic style house energy. I cannot even describe how much I struggled furnishing this living room. My main the main idea is to use items mostly from expansion packs for each of these builds and Seasons furniture is pretty good. It even has this nice dark dusty purple color swatch. But at the same time it barely matches anything else in the game. In the base game I should say. So the living room is kind of split to the main living room with the couch and armchairs, coffee table and TV. Behind it there is a fireplace nook with sitting area using the same couch but in smaller loveseat version. And there is a row of bookcases along the wall, which is a walk-in space between the entrance slash office and kitchen slash dining areas. I could not choose coffee tables and drugs for this room. I decided to go for the base game coffee table for the main space in this... What is that color? Dark pinky purple. And one larger base game coffee table, but I sized it down for the fireplace sitting area. Among grunk options, I went for the season's rug, but in this dark plain brown swatch to match the wood. The TV stand is actually two side tables from seasons, which I just put together to make it seem like one TV stand. And there is a chess table in the middle of this room. The empty space just feels odd, and the chess table is useful for gameplay so I had to add it. I tried to add a skinny rug in the walkway but none of the rugs matched the color scheme good enough so I deleted it at the end. Moving on to the storage room. It is to the right from an entrance. I put all sorts of boxes and decor items which could fit like stored items. Candles, chemicals, books and so on. But to make this room useful for your sims gameplay I included a woodworking table and a decor box from Seasons. Also I used this base game snack bag which is actually a usable object in gameplay. You can use it instead of a fridge to grab uh, quick meals or keep it here for decor. <laughs> also I added a pile of presents as if sims were preparing for some holiday and kept presents away for now. By the way you can use it outside of holidays and get presents anytime. Sometimes even pricey presents. It is a pro tip to urgently get money in the sims 4. It was tempting to add a Christmas tree to a storage but they are too big and did not fit in this 
tiny space. Now I'm furnishing what I call the music room. There are all musical instruments that are available in the game. And I made it look like a stage on purpose. Maybe Sims host fancy parties in this room. There will be also a bar and sitting area at the back of the room. You can see I did my best to include season's curtains in most of the rooms. I love those curtains and their swatches. I use them in many of my builds. Here I used it in white swatch with golden print, but in the living room I used it in dusty purple color. Season's furniture is so strange. There is nice suburban furniture and modern industrial furniture. How am I supposed to use it in one house? And seasonal decor of course as said. I was so desperate for decor options that I used balloons on one of the walls here, since maybe seems prepared for another party. Every time I try to create classic suburban home, I end up with something old but renovated. Just for me, modern buildings are easier to build and I like them much more. And so the upstairs turned out slightly renovated. This is a primary bedroom where I used my favorite season's bed in this peachy beige swatch and made custom built-ins from the base game kitchen cabinets, also in peach swatch. And you can see I used this strangely shaped rug from Seasons. I have never ever tried to fit it in my builds. But since I'm trying to make the most of the expansion pack items, I used the rug in this stripe beige and pink swatch. I'm so bad at naming colors. This room is quite large, so I wasn't sure how to fill it in. And I decided to close off 2x2 two two room for walk-in closet. It is purely decorative, play pretend, Sims will not use it, but it is realistic to have such a closet. And if you have the get-together expansion pack, you can turn it into functional closet. And I even separated an entrance area in this bedroom. Sims don't need it, but it looks nice. There is a desk with the computer and a dresser in the primary bedroom as well. I used different seasons bed in the second bedroom, which I thought would be for a teen. I hate this bed. Its swatches are ugly, but this purple one is fairly okay. I paired it with all the seasons furniture, nightstands, dresser and a desk. There is a computer in this room too. I used lights from seasons here and again, the style is different. They look okay in this room, but they are more modern than the rest of the house. It was so annoying me that at this point I tried to focus on the look of each room separately, if that makes sense. And in this room I focused on seasonal decor. I used a lot of garlands and they fit in the teenage room, right? I will use even more of them in the kids bedroom. I gave this sim an easel and made a small art corner. Main bedroom and this one share Jack and Jill style bathroom. I used the base game plumbing in the first floor bathroom, but the seasons plumbing in the both bathrooms upstairs, which again makes the second floor more innovated. There is a kids bedroom and infant toddler bedroom in this house, which I will be furnishing now. As always, I will paint all the ceilings, add all the light switches and finish furnishing the exterior. If you don't mind, I suggest we wrap up the speed build and move to the finished house tour. This is the lot in Willow Creek where I built this house. It cost almost 240k simoleons, which is insane. I recently built a large ultra modern family home, which ended up cheaper than this one. I will link the speed build for you here, just in case. So this is the finished pretty exterior of the house. There are a couple of sitting areas on the front porch. This one looks very cozy. If you walk to the right of the house, there is a swing set and the back entrance to the backyard. There is a telescope, planter boxes. I added bees over here. Grill, cute dining table and pink pool with a couple of lounge chairs. Toddlers have a separate pool and I managed to find a place for the weather control machine. If you don't use cheats or mods, you can use it to change weather through gameplay. But your sims can die from electrocution if they have low handiness skill. So be careful. And be careful with the telescope. And a pool. The Sims 4 is one giant death trap. There is a chess table, more planter boxes, another sitting area, and a flower engine table on the back porch. So you enter the house here to this spacious fancy entrance with lots of doors. To the right there is a storage room and to the left a home office. Moving forward on the left hand side you enter into the big living room and further forward to a cozy kitchen with a breakfast nook. Well not nook but <laughs> next to the kitchen there is a dining room with an exit to the backyard. I swapped one of the chairs 
for high chair because there is a toddler bedroom upstairs and it is cute to have separate seat for a baby at the table. Moving backwards, there is a hallway which leads back to the entrance or to the upstairs and this is the first floor bathroom and the music room. Upstairs there is a long hallway again because it matches old house energy but it is partially open to downstairs. To the left there is this kids bedroom for opposite children or teens but they share a desk. This room is absolute mess and it is meant to be this way. Second door leads you to the primary bedroom. Another pro tip for you to decorate your built-ins is to add lights. I used this giant wall light from Seasons and scooted it into cabinets. Let's go back to the hallway where you can enter the upstairs bathroom. There is a toddler party because to the right there is a toddler and infant bedroom in this cutesy pink color scheme. Next to it there is a home gym. I wanted it to be another bedroom but then I would exceed the 8 sims limit. So I made a gym instead. Base game home gyms look weird. Anyway, the last room is teen's bedroom with an art corner. And there is a shared bathroom with the primary bedroom. The house is available in the gallery and I hope it will be useful for your sims gameplay. And if you feel like hanging around I suggest you watch these videos. Thanks for stopping by and I will see you in the next one.